everyone, it's Miss Angela from the Fort Worth Public Library and I am here to share with you a mini story time and the theme is skunks. So first we have a silly song and then we have a story. Our song is a little bit silly so don't be afraid to get a little silly with this one. This is the skunks whole song and it's to the tune of the farmer and the dell but I think you'll pick it up really quickly. You ready? Let's go. Oh, I stuck my head in a little skunk's hole, and the little skunk said, Well, bless my soul, take it out, take it out, take it out, remove it. Well, I didn't take it out, and the little skunk said, If you don't take it out, you'll wish you had. Take it out, take it out, take it out, remove it. Well, I still didn't take it out, and the little skunk said, If you don't take it out, I'll spray you in the head. Take it out, take it out, take it out. Oh, oh, pee I removed it too late. So that's a fun one to sing over and over. Uh, the story that I'm going to share with you is adapted from Among the Night People, which is a story by Clara Dillingham Pearson, and it was actually published in 1902, so more than 100 years ago. And I found this book on Project Gutenberg, which has a huge library of books that are in the public domain. It's called The Skunks and the Oven Bird's Nest. Once upon a time, there lived a skunk family with a mother, a father, and eight children living in their burrow. They slept through the coldest weather of winter and only woke up when it was warm enough for them to enjoy life. No two of them looked exactly alike, although they all had small heads, little round ears, and beautiful long tails covered with soft drooping hair. They all had some white fur with a streak of white on their forehead, a spot of it on their neck, some on the tail, or a couple of stripes on their backs. One could see them quite easily by starlight on account of the white fur. One of the brothers had no white whatever on his tail, so they called him the black-tailed skunk. He had heard that there was an oven bird's nest on the ground by the fern bank, and he made up his mind to find it the very next night and eat the eggs which were inside. Another brother was called the spotted skunk because the spot on his neck was so large he had found the oven bird's nest himself while on his way home in the early morning. So it happened that when the family awakened the next night, two of the children had important plans of their own. Neither of them would have told for anything, but they couldn't quite keep from hinting about it as they made themselves ready to go out. I know something you don't know, said the black-tailed skunk. The spotted skunk twisted his head and said, You don't either. I do too, replied the black-tailed skunk. I do know something that you don't. And it's something nice, too. Ah, said the spotted skunk. I don't believe it, and I don't care anyhow. I know you don't know, and I know you'd want to know if you knew what I know, said the black-tailed skunk, who was now getting so excited that he could hardly talk straight. Children, exclaimed their mother. Not another word about that. I do wish you would wake up good-natured. Go at once. I will not have you talking this way in front of your brothers and sisters. So the two brothers started out for the night, and each thought he would go a roundabout way to fool the other. The black-tailed skunk went to the right, and the spotted skunk went to the left, but each of them, you know, really were planning to rob the same nest. It was a very dark night. Even the stars were all hidden behind the clouds, and one could hardly see one's paws while walking. But of course the night prowlers of the forest are used to this, and four-footed people are not so likely to stumble and fall as two-footed ones. So it happened that, while Mrs. Ovenbird was sleeping happily with her eggs safe and warm, two people were coming from different ways to rob her. Such a snug nest it was. She had chosen a tiny hollow in the fern bank, and had woven dry grasses and leaves into a ball-shaped nest which fitted neatly into the hollow. The black-tailed skunk sneaked up to the nest from one side. The spotted skunk sneaked up from the other side. Once the black-tailed skunk thought he heard something. At the same minute, the spotted skunk thought he heard somebody. Neither heard anything. Mrs. Ovenbird was sure that she had heard a leaf rustle outside and began to get scared. Slowly, the two brothers crept toward the nest and each other. 
they moved very quietly. Close to the nest, they crouched and sprang with jaws open and sharp teeth ready to bite. There was a sudden crashing of leaves. The two brothers had jumped squarely at each other. Each was bitten, growled, and ran away. And how they did run. It is not often you know that skunks go faster than a walk, but when they are really scared, they move very, very quickly. Mrs. Ovenbird felt her nest bumping for a minute as two people rolled and growled outside. Then she heard them running away in different directions and knew that she was safe. In the morning, she decided to take her children away as soon as possible after they were hatched in case the skunks came back. When the spotted skunk came home in the first faint light just before sunrise, he told the rest of the family how some horrible, great, fierce beast had pounced upon him in the darkness and bitten him on the shoulder. It was so dark, said he, that I couldn't see him at all, but I am sure it must have been a bear. The family turned to see the black-tailed skunk limping home. Did the bear catch you too? they cried. Yes, he answered. It must have been a bear. It was so big and strong and fierce, but I bit him too. I wouldn't have run away, only he was so much bigger than I. That was just the way with me, said the spotted skunk. I wouldn't have run if he hadn't been so big. You should have sprayed him, said their father. Then he would have been the one to run. The brothers hung their heads. I never thought of that, cried the black-tailed skunk. I was too surprised, said the spotted skunk. One night, some time later, these two brothers happened to meet down by the fern bank. It was bright moonlight, and they were back on friendly terms. The black-tailed skunk said, Come with me, and I'll show you where there is an oven bird's nest. All right, answered the spotted skunk, and then I'll show you one. I've been waiting for a bright night, said the black-tailed skunk, because I came here once in the dark and had bad luck. It was near here, said the spotted skunk, that I was bitten by the bear. They stopped beside a tiny hollow. There is the nest, said the black-tailed skunk, pointing with one of his long feet. Why, that is the one I meant, exclaimed the spotted skunk. I found it first, said the black-tailed skunk, and I'd have eaten the eggs all up if that bear hadn't bitten me. Just at that minute, the two skunks realized what had happened. I do believe, said the black-tailed skunk, that we bit each other. We certainly did, said the spotted skunk. But we'll never tell, said the black-tailed skunk. Now, they said, let's eat. But they didn't. In fact, they didn't find anything in the nest, for the eggs were hatched and the young birds had left the nest only the day before. I know where to find some good grubs, said the spotted skunk. Let's go, said the black-tailed skunk. The end. Thanks for joining us, everyone. 